Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, okay, so the reason I'm making this video today is that um, I don't know if you guys noticed this change on YouTube, but YouTube made a change um, to their to their platform recently where uh, on the videos now you can't really view the number of dislikes. Um, you can only view the number of likes on the video. So this is like one example. You can't see how many people have like disliked this video on YouTube. Um, so after this change was made, I was thinking like, <laughs> this will be the perfect time for me to hit you guys with some like controversial opinions and to really like make a controversial video to put on YouTube because now this way, if anyone is disliking it or just like hating on it or something, no one will know because they can uh, downvote all they want and no one will be able to even see the dislikes. <laughs> so if any of you guys want to like effectively hate on this video, make sure you leave a mean comment because if you um, press dislike, no one will see that. So uh, with that being said, um, I'm kind of just joking about that, but like the serious reason for making this video um, is that, so one thing that happens when people start to like learn to program or they like get into computational biology or like data science in general, um, everyone faces this like uh, same question of picking a programming language to use. And so in some cases you might be like, you might be taking a class where it's just, uh, the class is taught in some language and that's the one that you have to learn. But if you're learning on your own or if you have the choice, you might be thinking about like pros and cons of different languages to start using uh, to like begin your journey into data science or um, bioinformatics or computational biology. And so two of the most common ones um, are Python and MATLAB. So I'm just, I'm basically making this video with some like pros and cons for both of them. Uh, I'm not really going to like pretend to be unbiased here. Like I am biased because I do prefer um, Python overall. And I'll give some reasons why, but um, like if it sounds like I'm like hating on MATLAB at all this video, like I am, I do prefer Python over MATLAB, but I will say that like learning any language is better than not than not knowing a programming language. So I'd say if you do have to learn MATLAB or if you do just like choose to learn MATLAB, that's still a lot better than like not learning any language. You know what I mean? So um, this video is basically gonna be like comparing Python and MATLAB and I do lean more towards the Python side um, and I'll explain why, but uh, really learning either one of them or both of them I think is um, worthwhile. Uh, but okay, so yeah, let's uh, get into this, uh, this comparison. So these are the topics I'm going to be kind of going through with you guys. Um, have a, a couple different things that I'll, I'll sort of like give the comparison um, between Python and MATLAB. So the first one that you guys might be thinking about is the price. So this one is basically a clear win for Python because Python's free and MATLAB costs money. So, um, So, I mean, this one's just kind of clear cut. It's just an advance for Python. I mean, Python's open source. Um, the library is all open source. Um, MATLAB, you not only have to pay for the initial installation, but there's like hidden costs where a lot of the libraries, if, if you want to get like special libraries for like image processing or like machine learning or something, a lot of those like extra libraries um, cost additional money. So there's like hidden costs you run into and then um, a lot of the time, if you're if you're a student, if you're like in a university, um, your, your university might have uh, MATLAB offered for free, which is definitely a nice thing. But that also that can also be inconvenient because then you have to like renew the license every year, and you have to like sometimes you can like only use it when you're on the university Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So it's basically just like Python is just a lot easier in terms of cost because it's free and all the libraries are free and open source, and MATLAB costs money. Um, so, I mean, yeah, for, for price at least, I'm just, I'm considering this one like a clear win for Python. Um, but yeah, like enough said about that one. Um, for collaboration too, it, like going off of the same thing, collaboration, um, if you want to like be like writing code and collaborating on projects and like working with other programmers and other researchers, I think Python's easier for this, like partly because it's free and partly because more people are using it overall, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, so this one for like the same reason I'll say like Python probably easier because it's free. So like if you want to, I mean, if you want to, um, so I mean, this is like kind of a network effect where there's like Python's free, there's more people using it, there's more like open source projects going on. So since there's like more people using it and like more of these projects, 
it's it's just easier to like jump in and start collaborating with like other researchers and other uh, computer programmers like also using it. Um, but I mean, it's still it's still possible to collaborate with people on like MATLAB too, especially in like the university setting. Like in academia, I think a lot of people do use MATLAB. So I'll, maybe maybe I'll make a note of this too. Um, Yeah, like in a university setting, like I think you can like find projects to work on in MATLAB too. But I'd say like outside of universities, Python is like much more widely used. Um, yeah, I'll just like say that. Uh, so yeah, and so another thing like libraries, um, for both of them, I think both of them have pretty good libraries in terms of like, uh, yeah, in terms of like doing kind of specialized things you want to work on. Maybe it's like machine learning, maybe like image processing, maybe like stochastic uh, simulation or something. I think both of them have, have pretty good libraries, but uh, yeah, I'd say like both pretty good, but some of the MATLAB libraries, like I was saying, they hit you with like the hidden costs. So some of the hidden costs, um, yes, I mean, some of the libraries, like you have to pay additional money on top of the like original cost of MATLAB to even just use libraries. So, so like both, both, both have pretty good libraries, but uh, some MATLAB libraries cost uh, money. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think that, yeah, both are pretty good overall though. Um, ease of use, um, both pretty good. I think both of them, the, the language is written in a way that it's like, it's easier to use compared to like, tougher languages like C or like Java or something. Those are like hard languages where the syntax is like complicated and hard to learn. Um, Python and MATLAB, the, the syntax for both of them is pretty easy. It's pretty user-friendly, um, pretty good for beginners. Yeah, so for that one, I can't really fault either of them. Um, yeah, both of them are, are pretty easy to use in terms of the uh, syntax. Um, okay, user interface. Um, this one, it really depends on your preference. Um, so I'll just, I'll show you guys what like MATLAB looks like. So MATLAB has this like um, GUI uh, graphical user interface where it, it gives you this like software to work with. And it's basically like, um, it's just called like an IDE. Um, so it's it's like a, uh, like a software environment for working with your code. Um, you can run it, you can run your code here. It has also like a, a console you can use, um, a command line uh, set up down here. And then it has kind of this like um, this like nice software to use for debugging. You can like put like points in your code where you want it to stop, and you can like check and see at that point like what all the uh, what all the variables are, what their current values are. And this is like yeah useful for debugging because you can kind of like run your code through like piece by piece. Um, so if you want this kind of like useful like uh, software environment, I think MATLAB does um, it does have that to offer. Um, you can get, you can get like programming environments like this in Python too, but you'll have to get some kind of like, um, some kind of like special IDE. I mean, they're also like free to get to, um, I typically, I typically don't use one. So like with, with Python, I'll typically just use the terminal. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. So with, with Python, I'll, I'll just like make the code in like a text editor file and then run it like from, uh, the command line like this. I'll just type like Python three and then, um, like whatever the name of the uh, Python file is. I'll just run it like right from the terminal. Um, so this might seem like it doesn't have as much to offer as like the actual like MATLAB environment, but I prefer just using the terminal. I just think it's like cleaner, just like simpler and easier to use. Cause I mean, for one thing, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is like only in my head or if I'm like imagining it, but it seems like the MATLAB programming environment tends to like crash more easily. Like I've never had really the terminal crash on me or just like stop working or freeze up or something. But it seems like the uh, MATLAB environment sometimes, it's, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens sometimes that it'll like freeze up on you or something, or it'll just like, it'll take a long time to load to start up or just, you know, it has like, it has more overhead. Um, it has more overhead uh, requirements that it takes in terms of computing power. Whereas the terminal, it's just very clean, very simple. You can just like run it right from the command line like that. So personally, I prefer um, the, the terminal setup, but it really comes down to your preference. Some people, especially when you're learning, when you're starting out, when you're learning how to debug, you might prefer like the, uh, the MATLAB setup. Um, so for this, I'll just say, I'll just say like, um, MATLAB has 
uh, GUI software could be pro or con depending on your preference. So this one's really like both of them have like kind of pros and cons kind of depends on what you're looking for. Um, okay, so the next thing I was going to talk about was uh, was the speed. Um, and this one, based on what I've been, like, my own experience and what I've found, like, other people posting on, like, uh, like a Stack Overflow and stuff, um, seems like a comparable speed between uh, NumPy and uh, Mat MATLAB. Yeah, so, like, so NumPy is a special library in Python that people use a lot for, like, scientific computing like working with like matrices and um, yeah, just like doing like uh, linear algebra and like storing data and stuff. Um, so this is like a, a very widely used library that people use for like, for like data science and scientific computing. And I think the general consensus is if you're using this um, NumPy library, because it has a lot of its, um, a lot of its functions, like um, it's like functions are like actually written in C they're actually like pretty fast compared to just like regular Python. As long as you're using NumPy, it's like uh, comparable speed to MATLAB. And um, there could be situations where like one is better, th better than the other, but it's not like a clear difference where like, for example, like if you're looking at like C compared to Python, you can say like C in general is faster than Python. But if you're talking about like Python compared to MATLAB, you can't really say that like one's um, consistently faster than the other. Both of them are, are about like, uh, comparable speed as long as you're using this like this uh, numpy library without numpy i think that matlab might be faster but um most people most people use numpy for like for like data science type work uh so if you do learn python you'll probably end up using that at some point um okay so the next thing i was going to talk about was like if you guys are working in an hpc environment meeting um high performance computing basically like a supercomputing cluster uh these are pretty widely used in in like bioinformatics research um, if you don't have enough power, like on your laptop to get the job done, um, the university you're working at, like might have like a supercomputing cluster that you can, uh, access remotely and, and run your programs on there. And I'll say, this is another one where just like with the price, I'll say like this one is like a solid win for Python. Um, because like Python is like, you can typically count on like most HPCs to include Python and like already have Python like installed and ready to use. But I'd say that's not really true of MATLAB. Um, it might be possible to get like HPC work done uh, with MATLAB. Some of them might already have MATLAB installed, but um, it's probably, at least in my experience, it seems like more difficult to do HPC work using MATLAB because for one thing, it's not it's not 100% that it's even gonna have like MATLAB installed. And if it does, it seems to just be like harder to use. Sometimes you have to just like talk to the, system administrators to like figure out how to um how to work with it um so yeah i'll just i'll say for this one like um python included on most hbcs um uh, matlab less convenient so yeah this one I'll, I'll just call the hbc work i'll call this like a solid advantage for um for python um okay for resources and what i meant here when i said resources i mean like kind of educational resources for like learning how to use the language as well as like um, help debugging. So for example, like let's say I'm like writing a program um, and I, I run into a bug, like a like an error that I've never seen before and I need help like from the internet to like figure out this error. So um, I mean, in programming, like when you run into a situation like that, typically the best thing to do is just like Google the problem and see if there's a post on like Stack Overflow or like something like that, um, talking about the problem and if someone else has like run into it and found a solution. And I would say that like both languages have like pretty good resources um, in terms of like debugging and like figuring out errors and like learning how to use use language. Um, both of them also have like pretty good tutorials um, available online. So I'd say like maybe Python is like a little bit better because of like the same network effects we we're talking about before with like collaboration, where there's kind of just like more people using Python so that kind of means that there's like more people like posting about it on Stack Overflow, uh, more people kind of like um, just like talking about errors they've run into and like how they solve them and stuff and more people like making tutorials. But I'd say like MATLAB isn't bad on this uh, on this topic either. So I'd say like, yeah, for, for resources um, online, I'd say both of them are, are pretty decent.
So I'll just put, I'll put for this one, like, both of them are pretty decent. And then, oh yeah, so I was going to go to, I mean, there's actually, like, one thing I forgot that I want to mention before we get to the conclusion. I'll say, like, um, th this last topic that I kind of forgot is uh, employment prospects. And so this one, if you're learning, if you're learning how to program, like, with the intention of eventually getting a job, like, if, you, if you're looking for a job in, like, um, computational biology or data science or bioinformatics, um, I'm going to just, this might be a little bit controversial, but I'm going to call this one another solid win for Python. Um, and this one, like, for, for what I'll, like, cite for that is just, if you go on to, like, one of the job-finding websites, like, Indeed.com or just another, like, website that posts um, job openings, you can go through for the job you're looking for, like maybe it's a data science job you want, or maybe you want like kind of regular like um, business analytics or like computational biology, bioinformatics. If you just go through the job postings and like look at what language they are looking for people to know, um, Python is like way more commonly mentioned than MATLAB. And I know this because I do like browse these like job posting sites um, pretty frequently, just like looking at like looking like job openings and I see in terms of what they're looking for a lot more companies and a lot more like um, labs and, and research institutes are looking for Python than for MATLAB it seems like so I'm, I'm just going to call this one again like a solid win for Python um, just put many more employers looking for Python than MATLAB um, okay but yeah that's kind of like all the topics I want to go through and but to conclude, I, I want to say that, like, even though I'm kind of, like, I've kind of been, like, hating on, on MATLAB in this video, I'm kind of talking about, like, why I prefer Python, why I think it's, like, better to learn Python. I'll say that, like, learning MATLAB is still way better than not learning any language. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to put this one for, like, the first conclusion. Um, I'll put, even though I prefer Python, um... Yeah, like it's it's still definitely better to learn MATLAB than to not learn any program language. So if you're in if you're in a class that's like teaching MATLAB, I mean it's still definitely worthwhile to like learn it, get good at it. Um, it's still definitely definitely better to know any programming language than to not know uh, than to not know one. Um, I'll say also like a lot of the programming skills translate over easily from from one language to another. So it's kind of like if you learn like if you learn like for loops in Python then it's going to be the same idea of for loops in um, MATLAB. And if you learn like like uh, if statements or while loops in MATLAB, it's, it's going to be the same the same concept in Python. So a lot of the actual like programming skills, like thinking at like thinking algorithmically, th thinking like a programmer, thinking like how to um, solve problems in like an algorithmic way, those skills will be the same basically no matter what language you're learning. So I'll just put it for this. So in terms of like becoming a good programmer, learning how to like solve problems and think like a programmer, in that sense, like it kind of doesn't even matter what language you're learning. It's more about like learning the uh, the concepts and like the the logic, like loops, um, if statements, things like that, like working with variables, um, stuff like that. So I mean that stuff, um, it'll transfer easily across languages. So whichever one you whichever one you choose to learn first. Um, learning, learning more languages after you learn your second one is pretty easy because a lot of the concepts like carry over, um, very easily. It's really just the, the syntax. It's, it's kind of different. Um, and I'll say like, lastly, for the last conclusion, like, even though I prefer Python, I've kind of been talking about like why, why I prefer Python in this video, I would say like, if you can, if you can like learn both, I mean, it's, it's better, it's better to learn both than to only know one. I mean, it makes you like, um which makes you like uh, more versatile in like what you can do, more versatile in like who you can collaborate with and kind of uh, what projects you can um, get involved with. Yeah, learning MATLAB is still worthwhile and um, learning both is, is better than learning only one. Um, okay, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, just let me know in the comments and uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.